In this lecture, we are going to look at how pipeline control can be implemented. We have already seen an overview of how the pipeline data path can be implemented. In addition to that, we have certain control signals that are required to be propagated from one stage of the pipeline to another so that the different stages of the pipeline can be controlled appropriately. For the particular RISC-V implementation that we have been considering so far, this set of seven signals listed here is what we need. Now, one very important thing to keep in mind over here is that all of these discussions, the list of signals, the way they are propagated, and in fact, even the fact that we are using a five-stage pipeline is one particular set of choices that we have made. There are variants on this. You could have a different implementation that uses a different set of control signals. So you should look at the treatment in these lectures as being one set of possibilities that need to be adapted if you have a different set of choices being made for your data path. With all that said, let's look at how the control signals can be implemented for our data path. The signals that we are interested in are the ALU op, which is the desired ALU operation. In general, it could be an ALU operation, add, subtract, and, or, XOR, and so on. But the ALU may also be used for the load store operations in order to compute the target address, or for a branch on equals or branch on less than, where a subtract operation might be required. Another signal that is needed over here is reg write, which basically determines whether or not the destination register, the RD, the value there should be updated or not. For example, if our instruction is a store, then we know that none of the target registers should be updated. Similarly, if our target destination address is x0, we know that it should not be updated because x0 is hardwired to the value 0. ALU source is used in order to choose between the register value or an immediate value for the second operand of the ALU. PC source is used in order to determine which input the branch address or PC plus four should be used for the next address. Mem read and mem write are control signals that are sent to the memory block, that is the data memory. And mem to reg is a control signal that determines whether the value that is being sent to the register file is coming from the ALU or the memory, that is the data memory. Now, with this set of seven signals, we can actually implement all the functionality that we have been discussing so far for the basic RISC-V architecture. Let's see how this can be implemented in the hardware for the architecture itself. So the diagram over here, all figures here are taken from the textbook by Patterson and Hennessy, shows what the pipeline data path would look like. So you can see from the left-hand side, we have the instruction memory from which instructions are fetched. And the output of that goes to the IFID register. So the long rectangles seen in the figure are basically the pipeline registers. They are IFID, that is the register between the instruction fetch and decode stages. ID slash EX, which is the register between the instruction decode and the execute stage. EX slash mem, between execute and memory. And mem slash WB, between memory and write back. Now, what is contained in these registers, it's basically the data that is being propagated from one stage to the next. So for example, between IF and ID, it would be the instruction which was retrieved from the instruction memory and the current value of PC in case that is required for computing a branch address. Between ID to EX, we would once again need the value of PC. We would need the values that have been read out from the register file. And we may also need to propagate the immediate values that are generated. The rest of the instruction by itself does not need to be propagated across IDEX. And similarly for the other pairs of registers. Now you'll notice that we have not really shown any control signals being propagated here. And that is precisely what we plan to discuss now. The decode stage is responsible for figuring out all the control logic. Now, as you can see over here, the way it has been drawn, the ALU control, the ALU op is applied to the ALU control. The ALU source is applied in the EX stage in order to determine which input goes into the ALU. The PC source is basically determined in the fourth stage, that is the MEM stage. MEM read and MEM write are once again used in the MEM stage. MEM to reg is used in the multiplexer in the write back stage and so on. 
So we can see where each of these signals is used. But the fact is, each of these signals is generated as a result of the instruction decoding, which happens in the decode stage. The question then becomes, how do we propagate this information across the different stages? The simplest way to do this would actually be to send them across the pipeline stages themselves. After the IFID register, the instruction is decoded using the block shown as control over here. And the seven signals are generated and now need to be propagated. And you can see that they have actually been marked into three separate stages, the EX stage, the M stage or memory stage, and the WB or write back stage. Now, what are the signals that are going to be used in the EX stage? If we briefly pop back to the previous one, we can see that the ALU source and the ALU op control signals are going to be used in the EX stage. We do not need those signals after that. PC source, memory and memwrite are going to be used in the mem stage. The PC source will basically determine whether or not a branch is taken, but it means that at that point, the PC source value has been used and does not need to be propagated any further. And lastly, the mem to reg and the reg write signals are used in the write back stage because they are used in order to update the actual values of the register. Now, as you can see, the ALU source and ALU op, once they have been used in the EX stage, do not need to be propagated further. Similarly, PC source, mem read, and mem write do not need to propagate beyond the mem stage. And only mem to reg and reg write are used in the last stage, after which, of course, they, there is nothing further to do because the instruction has ended. So if we look once again at this diagram, we can see that it does precisely this. The two signals required in the EX stage propagate up to EX and are then dropped. In other words, they do not need to further propagate to the EX mem register. Similarly, the three signals used in the M stage are used in the mem stage of the pipeline, and only the signals in WB are propagated to the mem slash WB pipeline register. Putting all of this together, we can see that our final pipeline control could look something like this. We have exactly the same diagram that is with all the control signals, ALU source, ALU op, and so on. But in addition to that, I've also shown where the signals themselves, that is the control signals, are propagated through the different pipeline stages. This is essentially how the control part of a pipeline CPU is implemented. As we can see, all that we really need to do is to generate the signals and make sure that they reach the appropriate stage at the correct time. That is the primary purpose of the pipeline registers. The rest of the computation itself is performed exactly the same way as before. The data path continues to work as it would have normally. As long as we can make sure that the signal corresponding to the correct instruction reaches the right stage at the right time, we can be sure that this functionality will be correct. Now, of course, there are certain further issues with this. In particular, there can be problems with hazards, which we will look at in subsequent videos.